and welcome to Back Issues. I'm Tiffany. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And today we're going to be covering a Batman book. Batman? For, for one of our spooky Back Issues for October. Batman, you say? Batman, hey. coming for you! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've done Batman before during, like, the month of October. Oh, true. Last time he was a vampire. He's not a vampire this time. Good. Spoilers. Damn it. Spoilers. Now, who is Batman again? Oh, um, Batman is a, a gentleman, a very wealthy gentleman, a philanthropist, if you will, oh, okay. uh, who lost his parents at a young age, mm. and um, he vowed vengeance and to you know, care for his city of Gotham, and he trained all over the world and took on the mantle of the bat, because bats are scary, and fear is a mm. tool he uses. Ooh. I don't know about this Batman character. Listen, I know he's got legs. I will see. He well, doesn't have wings. Fair enough. Yeah. He has two tiny little feet. <laughs> <laughs> and little hands that are attached to his wings. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the thing. Bats aren't scary. They're adorable. Some of them. Certain scary. bats. Yeah. Those, I don't know. Those snub-nosed bats. Mm -mm. I like. I like no. those too. No. You ever, I, I remember seeing a video that Attenborough used to narrate, where like the, I think they were called vampire bats, where yeah. they would like go and crawl along the ground yeah. and find cows and like cut them and then just like dart, dart their little tongues into their into their blood. And I'm like, these are little cuties. Like they look like they look like little cats, like drinking no. saucers no. of milk. No. 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 Fruit bats. We're, we're, Fruit we're, bats are great. We're in danger. <laughs> Along the lines of Sal's many impressions, we're going to be doing uh, Batman Gothic today, which is written by Grant Morrison Ooh. with art by Klaus Janssen. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I, 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 I'm more familiar with Klaus Janssen's inks, but I have well, enjoyed his pencils before. I think he did a Daredevil End of Days, which go. I really enjoyed. Well, he also did the inks on this. <laughs> well, that would make sense. He's the artist on He's this. He's a consummate inker. Um, and then uh, Steve Buccoletto is the colorist. Cool. Um, I've always pronounced it Buccioletto. Well, I just said what the letters that were there that were present. I've never heard it, so I have no idea. Neither do I. Who's right? Find out in the comments. I don't care. It's Buccioletto, guys. Come on. <laughs> You're a Bouch. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Grant Morrison Batman story. Is, is it in continuity? Um, so, maybe. Right. Because this is this is technically, Gothic is in the uh, Legends of the Dark Knight series oh, that came out. What is out. Legends of the Dark Knight? Legends of the Dark Knight came out like shortly after like Batman 89. So like in 89, they're like, hey, let's come up with a Batman series or like imprint that can house kind of more mature Batman stories. Stories that were not aimed necessarily for like kids. I mean, they're flying high off of like this like, hey, here's a real movie. Yeah. yeah. Adults, would you like to read some Batman? Um, so they couched in on the idea that like, each each part of it would only be five issues. Okay. And so, like, every five hmm. issues, maybe sometimes a little less, but, like, they would switch creative team to someone else. Okay. It, this is, comes along the lines of, like, Prey and the cult. Yeah. And, like, Shaman mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They're all underneath this label. So if you like those, you might want to check out the other offerings from it, especially some of the early stuff, um, because, like, I, I think after issue, like, 36 or so, I think they switched over like so, like, not, it just being another Batman book. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of, like, switched from what it was to, to this other, like, style of storytelling. And then it wasn't always five issues. Sometimes it was, like, three issues or, like, an issue. So this is technically, this is Batman Gothic, which is a standalone story. When you think about it, it's, it's issues six through 11 of The Legends of the Dark Knight. Oh. So brilliant, by the way, because it was basically just, like, a graphic novel factory. Machine, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just, yeah. like, every five issues, we have a new graphic novel that's more or less standalone. Yeah. That also showcases, I recall... The earlier run yes, was so during a different time it, period. Yeah, like the first part of it when they were really doing that, like five, like six, trying to stick to that five issues, is during like they want to call it like the Batman Year One. Nobody said it out loud, but it's like during that those first few years when Batman was being Batman, like and so like so pre Robin, yeah, pre continuity. There is no Rob. Eventually, that would happen, and so inevitably the series would end up where the imprint would end up. Um, is it an imprint? It's just a title. A title. The title would end up being like not only past Batman stories, but like sometimes present Batman stories and like future Batman stories. Yeah. Mm. And so it kind of just like it lost its way, but it doesn't mean that those stories aren't good. So it wasn't going chronologically. It's literally saying like, hey, yeah. if you have a Batman pitch, yeah, it can go you, in here. You can write can a story, especially if you don't want it to be in the regular canon. Like yes. if you want to tell a story about Tim Drake, if you would rather tell a story about like younger Batman. Yeah. Go for it. Right, right, right. I like the freedom that the idea of like, hey, it doesn't have to be in continuity, you can do whatever you want, brings. 
But I also kind of like, it's almost like a slap in the face, like, hey, you're gonna write a Batman story. It's not gonna matter. Well, well it does matter. It, doesn't it does matter. matter because like, then they did um, Venom. Yes, and which is like, part of the Legends of the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, that was part of this title, and that oh. was referenced later on in the main Batman Oh continuity. yeah, everything in Legends of the Dark Knight happened. It's just that it happened between years like two and three. Right, no, but actually they said okay. that they, they weren't sure. That was actually, Venom was the first time it oh, actually, they actually referenced touched on it, it in continuity. Oh. Like, like Venom, the, so the actual... So something from Legends of the Dark Knights was actually referenced in the main continuity, gotcha. and then it kind of, I guess, opened the doorway. Okay. There's a lot of bats on that cover. This is a, this is, this is a Klaus Janssen cover, um, but this is not the main cover that I've seen for it. I've seen no. uh, the first issue's cover for it, which is this, which I really like yes. a lot. I, I like this cover. issue, I like this, this cover quite a bit. Mm. I think it's really cool. This is fine too. We do have an, an older version of it, but for the sake of having it on the couch and letting everybody touch it and hold, we're going with this one instead. Um, another like fun fact about this, like the title, I think it ended in like 2007, 2008. They kind of they nixed it, yeah. but it came back in 2012 as a, like a digital only series. And like, there's a few like digital series out there, and apparently it is still running to this day. Um, really? Yeah, they put a lot of creators over there. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, you in know. theory. <laughs> Maybe it sucks. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I haven't had a chance to check it out. Um, but I, I didn't realize, honestly, because, like, when you look at this, it doesn't say Legends of the Dark Knight on this, no, they, they... this version of it anywhere. But, like, if this is your only, like, thing that you're going to pick up, if you pick up this version of it, you don't know that there are other stories you might like. That's true. Like, these, like, five issue, like, you know, here's a fun Batman story. Well, kind this of is things. a new printing, and I haven't seen, like, new printings of things like... Prey yeah. and Shaman. Right, right. Uh, which they should be doing because they're just evergreen Batman stories that could just make you some money. Come right. On. I'm going to asterisk myself before someone else does, and I'm sure they already have. Um, it's six, issue six through ten. Oh, I'm sorry. So. I didn't want to say, be like, uh, you said it was five issues. Yeah. And six through 11 is six. Well, because five, 11 minus five is six. So give me a break. That's how my brain works. Yeah. Okay. Also, because when I first... It was like the second book they did, they fucked it up. Technically, no, when I first when I first looked this up, a site said it was issues th 6 through 11, so I had that in my head, so and just, so like I... Ah, yeah, they I were was using like, real math, not comic math. Yeah, and I was like, wait. And then when I later learned that it, they were all five issues, I was like, oh, okay, that makes way more sense. Anyway, there's another fun thing about this. This is Grant Morrison writing this, right? Yeah. Grant Morrison had done like a part of like an anthology kind of thing, 86, I think. Okay. But he's also he also wrote Arkham Asylum... Serious House of Earth. Serious Earth, which came out in, I think, 89. Mm -hmm. But this makes claim to being Grant Morrison's first oh. Dark Knight written story. Well, if it is, so, then it's heavily referenced in any of his works subsequently thereafter. I don't know. Because and like, he is a lunatic It like, literally kind of says it on the back. It says, on his first Dark Knight story ever. So Maybe. I don't know what that means if he didn't write this first, and then the other one got published first. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like I said, I really didn't look too far into this. I thought that was interesting, though. Yeah. So just kind of bear that in mind because, like, I enjoyed this. Good. I enjoyed this. That's good. <laughs> I, I enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. um, it is, I hope we also enjoy it. It's Same. very different, and yet it's, like, so obvious that it would be this, what, what it is. Okay. Like, so obvious that this is what it would be. Okay? So. This isn't, like, the, what was it, that steampunkish. Oh, Victorian. Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, Gotham not by Gaslight. Not at all. It's, an it's, not, it's not Gotham Gothic. No, 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 no. No. Okay. The Gothic does make... We'll get into that. Cool. Um. Okay, so this is Batman. Again, this doesn't say when it is. Sure. It doesn't, like, reference, like, the time. It doesn't reference the year. It doesn't reference how long ago it was. It's just, here we are. Here's some Batman. Here's Batman. But is there, a, is there a prowler that someone's driving so we can cement it in time? <laughs> of course. Please. Yes. Perfect. No, no, no. Um, so this opens up in Gotham. Um, there is a man hanging upside down in like a like a construction area kind of looking place. And there's a couple of uh, rough looking dudes standing nearby. One guy's got a bat and like a cigarette and like clearly they're like, they're, they're going to beat this man. Okay, okay, we read this entirely different. You see someone who's gonna get beaten up by these two dudes. Yeah. I'm seeing a, you know, massage therapy kind of thing. They're hanging them upside down to stretch mm. out the muscles. The bat is to work out the kinks. Legit was better than I thought you were gonna say, which was like, I see a really realistic pinata. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the candy. It's so gooey. Oh. My <laughs> The two gentlemen are mobsters. This guy was supposed to make sure, like, a like shipment of drugs 
or whatever got where they needed to be. The shipment. I'm sorry, we don't know which drugs. I assumed it was drugs. If it but was made in the 80s and 90s, it was, it was drugs. drugs. Yeah, yeah. But like, and this guy's like, it wasn't me. It was the Colombians. Like that shipment definitely got. I put it on the boat and blah blah blah. Yeah. And also, you know, we're saying Colombians too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, you put something like that in a book with a guy hanging upside down. I'm like, and then the predator shows up. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. No. No. There's no. There's no predator <laughs> in this. I mean, there's a predator in this, but not that kind of predator. Right. Um, so anyway, like the, the, the rough looking dude takes the bat and starts like wailing on this guy, right? The guy with the bat, by the way, is like the mob boss. Like he's actually oh, the he's one in charge and he's like, yeah, no, like he's just yeah. like, no, like I get dirty, you know, this is fun. He's like kingpin in a way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And so like, um, you know, he beats the guy within like an inch of his life. He's like, you have to tell me, like, tell me. And he's like, I, I, I don't, I got nothing. And he's just kind of like, ugh. And then he tells the other guy, he's like, hey, go get the, go get the gasoline. Like, go get the fuel. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, like, guy goes to get it. And then, like, our main guy, like, our main dude, like, hears, like, music. Like, something he's singing. Okay. Like, he's like, what the hell is that? And then he goes check it out. He takes the lighter fluid. He pours it all over the guy. And then he wanders off and he finds, like, an old record player and, like, a note. <laughs> Hang on. I don't, I don't want to get sidetracked. I'm going to still cover you in gasoline. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. Well, I want to give it a chance to like dry a little bit so we get those fumes. Yeah, you know hold that I mean? thought. Like, I, I, I get the fumes. I don't want the liquid to put it out. Yeah. Um, it finds this note. The note says, like, like one that on a lonesome road doth walk in fear and dread. And he's like, what the hell is this? He's like, I, I don't know no Shakespeare. He's like, that's beautiful. And he rips the tear from his eye. <laughs> so he hears his name called. His name's O'Rourke. And like, he freezes. Like, and I love this panel because this is like Class Jansen just Yep. Nailing it. Like, you see the terror on this man's face. And there's, like, a shadowy figure who's just like, you remember me? And he's, like, smoking a cigarette. And then you, like, hear this, like, shriek. And you see the hanging, the guy who was hanging upside down, like, and he's just like, please help me. You've, you've got to help me. And the guy's like, I can't help you. Like, what, what, what do you want? And he's like, oh, he's like, you know, he's like, do you want a cigarette? And he takes a cigarette and he flicks it at the guy. And no. the guy goes up in flames. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Establishing things. Mobsters. Yep. Death. Spooky and someone figure. who like you know is not afraid to just kill people yeah. even though they have no, no connection to them. Kaiser Sose. Right. Noir. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So now we go to this like very like like monochromatic lit hallway with like all these crazy columns and there's like two little boys walking down the hallway and, and they're like, gonna start ACDC. <laughs> they should sure look like it. <laughs> they're two schoolboys. <laughs> <laughs> but as they're walking, one of the little boys goes like, why have you brought me here, Bruce? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, anytime it's a flash, that kind of coloring, flashback to Bruce's childhood. Right, not yeah. a flashback. Um, what? So, as they're walking, one of the boys, who they look identical, grows up to be Bruce Wayne. Oh. Dream sequence. hmm There you go. <laughs> and so, now that we have an adult Bruce and a young Bruce walking together. Okay. And like, you know, he's like, I don't understand. Like, why are we back in school? Why, why am I wearing this ridiculous outfit? And he's like, oh, hang on, I gotta, I gotta show you something. You gotta come with me, you gotta come with me. He brings him into this like cathedral where there's like a, a gigantic cross there. There's like, a, there's like a guy up there who's just like, oh, you're a teacher now? And he says, yes, Mr. Crane. And he's like, oh, I can tell by your, your cloak. Like, that's, <laughs> that's what you are. And like, he's like, well, he's like, your father will be very happy with that. And he's like, my father, <laughs> my dad. Don't bring him up. What? Oh my God. So he sees like the shadowed figure and like, you know, off to the side and he's like, father, speak to me, turn around. And when he turns around, his dad's mouth is sewn shut. Ooh, yes. yeah. And then he wakes up screaming. That's awesome. And Alfred's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Does he wake up screaming, but like he can't open his mouth? Mm. No, he's fine. But like he's upset, he's like, it's the same dream over and over again. Mm. And Alfred like gives him some crap because it's like four in the afternoon. <laughs> it's like, it's not really a nightmare, sir. <laughs> it's more like an afternoon mare. <laughs> it's a day mare. Um, I don't care what it is, you bring me cocoa. <laughs> Where is, where is the food I won't eat? I want you to always make it and then throw it away. Don't give it to anyone. <laughs> so then we cut to another, like, like a, like a mobster scene. There's a, there's a, like a gentleman there. There's a person sitting on the bed and like, you know, they're, they're getting ready to go out. And like the person on the bed is like, the wig's a little tight. I'm glad you told me it was a mobster scene. I thought Alfred was on a date. Right. No, this Alfred, this version of Alfred has no mustache. Oh. He's a mustacheless Alfred. Oh. It's very okay. jarring That's and it took me weird. some time to get used to, but by the end of it, you're still upset. I, <laughs> look, we got Michael Caine. That kind of normalized it a little bit for me. It's, oh, yeah. No. I never thought about that. No. I guess... Because that's just Michael Caine. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's not really trying. <laughs> that being said, I guess like. Michael Caine, maybe... will you wear a mustache? No. No. All right, fine. 
All right, maybe, well, you should be fine. Well, what they should have done, since Warner Brothers has just CG'd the mustache on. <laughs> I guess, you know, we're trying to show you it's kind of in the past. Like, Alfred didn't grow the mustache until, like, year three. He thought three. it was dashing. Leslie like, Tompkins said it was dashing one day. Okay, um. <laughs> there's no way he didn't have that mustache. Whatever. All right. Fair enough. It's fine. So... Anyway, person on the bed is complaining about like like the wig and how it's a little tight, and they're like, just you gotta wear it. And it's like everybody knows about you, oh. man. Like everybody already knows about what what your deal is. And they're like, listen, I'm just trying to make a conversation. I'm sorry. And he's like, are you are you ready to go? Like this weird thing came in the mail. Take a look at it. There's some poetry on it. They they read <laughs> it. It says like my mine days they fell confounded chaos roared and felt tenfold confusion in their fall through his wild anarchy. But so huge a rout encumbered him with ruin, hell at last, yawning received them whole, and on them closed. They go to the elevator, um, and as he pushes the button for the elevator, the door shut, and wham. Cool. Fitting the poetry. Yes. Right? Huh. Absolutely. When the when the elevator falls, the person who was wearing the wig, it's, it's revealed. I, I, I believe it's a man. Oh. It's difficult to tell, because it's like, you assume that it was like, so, like, uh, just trying to hide the identity like an, of whatever like Ron Navy, is, but then, yeah. you, then you look at them and like again this is like the late 80s yeah. so like it's treated in a different way obviously and like later on when two people are talking about the, the person who died um, they, they're like I, I and, and the way he and yeah, and the way he was found, there goes his macho reputation. There you go. Oh, okay. So that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's like this cool moment like this gangster, that's interesting. they're gay they're trying to hide it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, in that way. But, like, they're also, like, very tender with this person. Like, there's literally, like, this guy doesn't treat this person, like, badly at all. Yeah. Right? But they die. <laughs> Alfred comes... I, I just want to mention this one page. There's literally just one weird page here. <laughs> um, and this, to me, feels very Grant Morrison. Maybe you can set, shed some light on this. But, like, Bruce is sitting in the parlor in the dark. And Alfred brings him food and gives him some crap about the fact that, like, you know... You're just sitting in a room with stopped clocks. All the clocks are stopped at 825. Mm. Which I assume is it must the, be the time that his parents were shot. Yeah. The, the time and so varies. He, and so he has this room that he can go and just be sad. Yes. No, it was, it was August 25th. It's to remind him of uh, Alfred's birthday. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. nice. That's the brooding parlor. That's I always his, forget it. That's his birthday. And he's like, Alfred, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, what room am I in? The birthday room, sir. And what day is it today? It's August 25th, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're fired. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bit much. It's like Hook's little clock room. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, I, I don't like that. It's, because the entrance of the cave is a clock. Yeah. And he just sets it to the time that they die and right. it opens the thing. That's enough. You don't need it to be I, like he's cacophonously surrounded. Unless like the chimes go off at 825. Right. And he's just, but no, well, they're no, set every time. They're perpetually set to 825. Right, so right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, okay. So we cut to two other monsters, right? Together? To, well, they're on the phone. They're talking to each okay. other. One's name is Kane. Their last name's Kane. The other one's Otavio or Otavio. Okay. And, like, essentially they're talking about, like, how they just found this guy. And, like, they just, there was that other guy, too, right? And it's like, I, I you know. <sighs> yeah, one guy burned. And, uh, yeah. No, one guy got killed by a mysterious One guy person. killed, got killed off panel. Right. And the other guy. Plummeted to his death. Yeah, died in, a, in an elevator, like, accident. Accident. Was, um, there a, was there a record player with the second one, or was it just a note? No, it was just a note. Okay. Mm. Um, and so, like, uh, Otavio, or Octavio is like, you know, like, oh, I'm like, hold up. Like, he's kind of, like, in, like, a safe room kind of thing. Like, just keeping himself safe. Yes. Um, and, like, the guy, this guy on the phone, Kane, is like, listen, Rourke and my brother are dead. And you're like, oh, okay. His okay. brother's the one died the in the guy. elevator. Mm -hmm. Cool, right, whatever. And he's like... And I'm pretty sure they were killed by the same guy. He's like putting it all together, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, it's Mr. Whisper. He's back. Mr. Whisper. That sucks. Okay. Mr. Whisper. All right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Give it give it the benefit you of know, the doubt. You know what? It was the early days. It was like pre penguin, so yeah. all right, Mr. Whisper. It's Whisper. Mr. There, whisper. You know what? There's a gentleman ghost. I'm not one to judge. Right. <laughs> um I think Scott Snyder might have referenced Mr. Whisper at some point. Oh yeah? I think. He referenced Crazy Quilt, so probably. Why not, right? <laughs> Octavio is like, you're out of your mind. Like, it can't be Mr. Whisper. That, it, it can't be him. I don't understand. He's like, no, I'm telling you, it's him. And like, I have an idea. And I, this is how we're going to fix this problem. And Octavio, I like how this is portrayed. The way Morrison is telling us the story and the way Jansen 
shows it to us is like, since it's a phone conversation, we're not getting every single piece. We just hear people's reactions. So like, you know, Kane's like, I have an idea. Here's what it is. And I'll tell you, it's like, that's crazy. Oh. That's an insane idea. And I'm like, oh, this is genius. And now like, what is the idea? Right. What okay. Okay, cool. Right. I, I, you're going to immediately know what the idea is. Cause he's just like, we're going to need a big arc lamp. And you're like, what? Yeah, what? 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 And then, like, as, like, Octavio's, like, like, you know, we killed him. We killed Mr. Whisper. He's not Jack. He can't be back. All right? And then okay. he's like, Jack? Hello? And then, like, he hears a voice that, like, is like, oh, hey, yeah, Mr. Kane can't talk right now. He can only whimper. Uh-huh. And he whimpers for you. And he's like, who the hell is this? And he's like, you know who it is. Mr. Whisper? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's like, Mr. Octavio, like, I, I'd be so heartbroken if you didn't remember me. Oh. But don't worry, it'll be your turn soon. Okay. And he, and he just leaves, and the, the, the phone is just hanging there, covered in blood. Oh. And, like, oh, this is going to be a long call. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get charged a lot. Well, he just hangs up. He didn't call collect, did he? Probably not. It's fine. He can hang up. Yeah. Octavio will hang up. Yeah. So. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up. <laughs> no, you. Yeah, Mr. Wizard, you hang up. No, you hang up. Also going on in Gotham City is, like, there's a new cathedral that's been built. And they're going to open it on May 1st. And um, there's going to, when they open it, there's a time capsule they're going to actually like unearth and like open up. And isn't that fun and exciting? Sure. Okay. A time capsule at a church just sounds like it's someone's coffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're open up this time oh, capsule. Oh, ah, bones. Oops. <laughs> It'll be a box of Bibles in it or something. Right. It's an 18th century time capsule. So they, uh, they've, got, they've got high hopes. They've got high hopes. I'm sure it won't just be dust. Yeah, probably not. Unless the Ark Covenant. Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to open that. Uh, we see Batman out on patrol because, like, Batman at this point is, like, just keeping the city safe from, like, muggers and, like, whatever, Yeah, right? there's no colorful costumed characters no, to fight. There's no, 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 no rogues no. yet. Yeah, so, like, you know, like, he hears a scream, so he goes to, to solve that problem. And we cut to an op- the opera house, right? And uh, the opera going on is Don Giovanni, and we see literally Marlon Brando here. <laughs> Yep, that's just like, straight up Marlon Brando. Like, I'm going to draw Godfather. Marlon Brando. I don't know what it is about them, but like <laughs> they love to reference the Godfather. You see it. In well, the he's last a mobster. Time. Yeah. So. Yeah, but they only to draw the mobster. Well. The greatest mob movie of all time. They, there are lots of mobs. Yeah. Well, they did. They did. This is uh, Mr. Gra- Graziano. It's a Z, so I'm going to say it that way, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Mr. Graziano is there with his very young escort okay um who is filing her nails at, at the so board yeah, right. yeah great visual yeah mm. it, is, it actually it's like it's really well depicted you know everything about these two exactly um and there's like a dude who is like keeping the front of the house he has nothing to do necessarily with with uh graziano okay. he's just like literally like he's just the guy at the front of the opera house and like this dude like hands him like a package. He just puts the box in his lap. He's like, "Here, I'm leaving now. And this is for Mr. Graziano." Okay. He's like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh, okay, cool. Uh, did you not enjoy the performance?" And he's just like, "No, no. I, I, John Giovanni is one of my favorites. I just I don't care for the ending." And he leaves. He's like, "Please make sure that these chocolates are delivered to Mr. Graziano." And he's like, "Okay." So straight away, and he's like, "What's your name?" He's like, "He's like Mr. Uh, and he's like Whisper." And yeah. He leaves, and you're like. All Mr. right, Whisper. this guy is not hiding it. He's just like, it's me. I'm yeah. Mr. Whisper. I'm here. Screw you. Um, <laughs> so the fate of that box, by the way, is the box is brought up to Graziano. He opens it up. The girl's extremely excited. She loves chocolates. He feeds her one of them, and there's an explosion. Oh. Okay. And like you're like, oh crap. Some dangerous chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> Super dangerous. Um, Batman essentially fights some muggers in like which they like look lo- like lunatics. Like they very much look like what i guess frank miller's like proto yeah the proto mutants they look yeah. like fan of the opera i guess yeah. a little bit like they're, that's why they're hanging out at the opera house but oh. like it's weird that they have like the opera boys they have like like one side of their face is a mask the other like it's like he's gonna do something with these they're guys flotsam and jetsam of masks right, right. but they're not they, they don't mean anything they only it's... had enough to buy one mask right. and they're like we'll split it yeah that's fair you know what it is it, it, maybe it's like an indication of like Gotham making its turn from, you know, like, organized crime to colorful, yeah, like, magical crime. for sure. Because like, everybody always says, like, you know, Batman's the reason. 
And it's like, maybe Gotham is just so unique and special that, like, it was always going to morph right. into something kind of bizarre. It could be. I'm, I'm sure that Morrison has a very specific reason. As to they're why like they're that. sharing one mask, because as you can see, it's on either side of their face. Yeah. So it is straight up their, exactly. like, one mask. And when, and when he comes on the show, we'll ask him. That's true. I love back issues. I love this channel. You guys are so great. Yeah, what about the two masks, man? Oh, how much time do you have and how much peyote do you have? <laughs> uh, time a lot. Peyote? I don't know. Don't man. worry, I brought plenty for everybody. Let's do oh, it. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, other, like, the reason I want to point out this fight um, is because it s establishes like a fun like line that you'll see throughout the book in a way. Mm. And like it's that Batman says, Gotham City is hell. We're all in hell. And I am the king of hell. <laughs> and then he beats the crap what out of them. What a nuts thing to say. I like that. I've never heard Batman say I, that. I feel life. like it's He's funny. working out his lines. Yeah, right? yeah. I am the king of hell. Like, you mean he's shorten it up, maybe make it more generic, a little less denominational. How about the knight? You got that, you know, double entendre thing going. How does that just, uh, connect to hell? I don't understand. It, 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 I know, yeah. I know. I'm the devil! <laughs> <laughs> Does that catch <laughs> Again, like, you know, if you were the devil, you know, that'd be one thing, but you're not dressed like the devil, you're dressed like a bat. <sighs> you're saying I should change my costume. Uh, I feel like you kind of dedicated yourself to okay. the costume. <laughs> we'll see. Um, we also are introduced to, like, a new character in the book. A, a young lady gets off of a bus and, like, gets catcalled. She gives them a look and they leave her bay. Oh. So, but we're going to see her later on, so it's like, this is this is, this is her debut. Wow. They, she got catcalled to the point where they're, she's, they're saying, here, kitty, kitty. Yeah. That yeah. is catcalled. Yeah. That is literal catcalling. Meow. So Batman's done with his fight. He's, like, he's up on a gargoyle. He's doing his thing. And he then, protects the guy. He wins, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. We don't see it, but we assume he does. Sure. All of a sudden, like all of Gotham City's like eyes are are, are going skyward, yeah. and like Batman looks up like, and oh shit, look like, at me! And there's a signal in the sky, and it's the bat signal, but it's not quite the bat signal. It's an upside down bat signal. Oh, evil Batman! Evil Batman! The inverse, huh? It's hmm. Catman. Meow. There is a Catman. I know. And he sucks. So we we see Octavio, and now he's hanging out with a guy who we'll find out later on is named Morgan Stern, and it's just two mob guys, okay. right? And they're on the roof. And like he's like, this is Morgan Stern's like, this is a bad idea. He's like, A, he's not gonna show, and B is oh, stupid. They, were they the ones who cast the signal? Yeah. Did Wait. they just screw it up? No. Did oh. they create the bat signal? That's what that guy's plan was. That's why he's like, we're gonna need a big art light and like all this other stuff. Oh. And he's like, cause like Octavio is like, you know, it probably won't show up, and that's probably for the best. And the Batman's like, it's too late, I'm here. <laughs> and then he like, he's like, You call you dared to call me? Like he's so offended <laughs> by it. You dare call the king of hell? <laughs> And they're like, what? I'm sorry, the Prince of Darkness? And, what? And like, Octavio <laughs> is like trying to keep everybody cool because Batman's there, he's upset. Yeah. The other mob <laughs> he's guys- He's already upset. The other, the other mob guys are like ready to draw their pieces and he's like, well, everyone's- cool, cool, it's cool, it's cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody, we turn on the signal and Batman showed up. I'm not really sure why we're all surprised. Right, yeah. That was the plan. Yeah, yeah. were you not listening? That's interesting, okay. So like, he's like, hey, hey Batman, it's good to see you. Right. It's good to see you, thanks Great for coming. Batman's like, he's like, you good to see me. You're you're scum. <laughs> it's never good to see me when you're scum. How dare you call me? Yeah. How dare you? And then he points at it. He's like, what, 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 what is this? And he's like, oh, we built it. We 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 like the inverted bat signal was my idea because I figured it would get you to come here. What well, if the bat signals never existed before? Now, any version would attract him. Well, also, maybe it has. If it's inverted, it just depends on which way it's pointing. Like, <laughs> yeah, which... If it's there. inverted and you just, like, r go to the other side of the sky, oh, look, now it's right side up. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Well, not the way they shot it. Well, but the inversion, of course, is supposed to be evocative of, like, you know, some, like, the, 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 the upside-down cross, yes. the upside-down pentagon. Like, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, oh, I thought it was him, like, jumping down off of building tops. No, no, no. Like, like they, they see him head first. <laughs> no, they <laughs> literally were like, we need a way That's to get... That's how I see him. you all the time. <laughs> so we need a way to get you here, all right? And then, like... Octavio's like, okay, uh, clearly this is getting him very upset. Uh, turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> Can you imagine? He's just freaking he's out. Like they're a... like, oh my God, he is losing it. Yep, turn exactly. The light off. And he's like, okay, hey. Turn the light off! <laughs> he's a fucking T Rex. T -Rex. Don't so move. basically, like, Octavio's like, hi, so here's the plan. We are here to make a bargain with you. 
bad man overcome to bargain. Um, oh my god, and he's the devil. Yeah. This is all fitting together really well. Right? right, and like, he's like, what, he's like, there's something that's happening, and it's kind of out of control. Like, right. We, we do not have a handle on the, what is happening right yes. now, and he's like, Batman's like, go on. <laughs> the phantasm, I mean, Mr. Whisper is killing mobsters. Right, and he's just like, okay, so there's a guy who won't stay dead. Mm. And he's like, like 20 years ago, me and a bunch of other guys, most of which are dead already, killed this dude, and like, he like literally ha is back. All yeah. right, I'm gonna stop you right there. Yeah. Arrested. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me stop you right there. Batarang. Right. The reason they killed him, though, was because he murdered eight children. Oh. Jeez. Were they the, the mobster's children? No, he was a child serial killer. And they hired him, like, through that? No, I'm assuming they... He was a child serial killer. They found out about it and they killed him. Ah. No. Like the mob was taking care of their territory? No, 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 okay. no. Okay. So here's what happened. Okay. This, like, 20 years ago... Kids start disappearing and dying, right? They're turning them dead, which sends GCPD into a flurry of activity. Mm -hmm. And so the mobsters can't keep doing the work that they want to do because there are cops everywhere right. trying to find this one guy. So they okay. take it upon themselves and they go find this guy. Oh, so it's not that he was like an enforcer for them. It's the mob declared war on this child predator Yep. because the, he was rallying up the cops. Yeah. Yep. Because he was uh, bad for business. Yeah. Okay, that's neat. Because I really thought That's... it was going to be like he was an enforcer or something like that for them. And he'd like, no. You know. So like what will be revealed is that like when they say he won't stay dead, they're serious about that. Like, like they keep killing him? Yeah. Well, no, they killed him. Yeah. They, like, they're like, no, we killed him. Right. Like they shot him and it didn't work. And then someone took a hatchet to him and it didn't work. Uh -huh. And so like they literally. They Rasputin him? Yeah, kind <laughs> of. Well, not. They, no. They didn't do it all. I wish they had done that, but they didn't. They. They ended up like tying a rope to his neck, t attaching to it, anchoring, and they threw him in, in the harbor. In the harbor. Cool. And so, like, and they're like, and he's back, and he's hunting us. And Batman's like, "Oh, you know what it's like now to like, you know, be afraid. Like, you're 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 sick from fear right now. Good. Okay. I'm not going to help you." <laughs> That's awesome. So he says, like, no. you, he's like, "You turned Gotham City into hell. Now you rot in it." Okay. And he leaves. And like Morgan Stern's like, "I told you." See? Like, thank you for not helping at all right. in this situation. Dump that light over at GCPD. Right. Um, this girl shows up at the cathedral. Like, she starts, like, spouting off all this bizarre stuff, talking about, like, being a bride of Christ. Like, she's a nun. Okay. Right? And, and she's just like, I, take my, I took my vows, blah, 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 blah. And, like, she gets kicked out because nobody's supposed to be in there. The cathedral isn't open yet, right? Mm -hmm. and this be-trench-coated man shows up uh -huh. and is like, oh, are you having an issue, Mr. Trimble? Who's, like, the guy who threw the girl out. And he's just like, oh, no, it's fine. Just some crazy broad showed up, whatever. And like, you know, claimed she was a nun. But like, you know. It was nonsense. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> so we cut to another dream. And Sweet. there is literally a boat with a cathedral coming out of the top of it. And it's like a really dope image. That is dope. And like Batman is Batman now. And like he's standing on a beach. And like his father's there with like the, the sewn, sewn mouth. mouth. And like he's just like, dad, we have to get off the beach. There's a boat. It's going to crash into us. And as he's yelling, he becomes like a child dressed as Batman. Yeah, uh, I've seen Morrison make that happen yeah, before. Right, and that's it's always really cool when it's well rendered. But like before, is really this is the before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like his dad writes a note on the beach that says like unlock the rose, and he's just like, Dad, no, I don't, I, I don't know what you mean, but we gotta go. And he's like, he turns around, he's like, Dad, he's back to being Batman, and then he's in a classroom, mm. and there's like a group of like students there in chairs, and they're all like like decayed corpses Whoa. and they're singing ring around the rosy <laughs> and like they're like you know ashes ashes we all fall down and then like they all like all the desks are around him okay and like it says like you know set us free unlock the roses good mm. god right and then like oh, they I, all have oars yeah they all have oars like keeping him in and then like one of the, this is such a good line i just love this line it just says the worms build tunnels and galleries in our corrupted cryptid flesh Ooh. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is a good line. I love it. And they're like, we've been dead these 20 years. And you're like, oh. Oh, it's the kids. And like, and then he hears someone behind him go like, Wayne, like you're, you're a sneak. You're a sneaky little Wayne. And he turns around and it's the man in the trench coat. Oh. And he Mr. wakes Wicker. up and he's like, when we cut to, God, like, to Wayne Manor and like, Alfred's like, okay, so same, was it the same one? He's like, no, this was different. <laughs> And, like, my dad gave me a warning, and I don't quite understand it. But, like, hey, 
have I ever told you about like my schooling from when I was a boy? Not really. And Alfred's like, I mean, not not recently. Yeah. Go ahead. And so he does. He's like, I was there. But yeah, I used know. to drive you there, but whatever. No, he went to boarding school. Oh. And this, like, his parents sent him away to boarding school. It's like an all boys school, first of all, and like. The word, like, scandal, like, you know, if something, like, inappropriate happened, like, you know, older boys beating on younger boys or, like, other... A girl! (laughs) Not that kind of scandal. Or, like, you know, other nefarious acts that could happen between a teacher and a student happened. It wasn't called scandal. It was called tradition. It was just a tradition. That's just what happened here, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a monstrous place. And, like, Bruce hated it. He hated being there, and he didn't want to be there. And he had one friend. His name was Robert. And, like, Robert was this, like, tiny little boy who, like, was very kind of, like, sickly. And, like, he was, you know, he, he just had a hard time. He obviously didn't have the same type of, like, upbringing as Bruce had. Yep. But, like, they were still friends. And, like, his, the, his friend, Robert, was like, this is hell. We're in hell. Okay. Right? Ah, so we're bringing that back around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, like, he would not be called Bob or Robbie or Bobby. It Rob- Robert. 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 That is Robert. my name. <laughs> yeah. But my, but it says it on my certificate. Right. And <laughs> and Robert told him, he's just like, he's like, yeah, no, we are in hell. Because, like, like, Winchester is the devil. Is that a headmaster? Oh, yes. Okay. And he's just like, and, and, like, Bruce is like, what are you talking about? And he's like, he has no shadow. <laughs> oh. And you're like, what? And then, like, inevitably, it wasn't long after this conversation that Robert went away. Just disappeared. Like he was just gone, and like you know, a lot of people were like, "Well, he was sick." Yeah. Like he was, he wasn't a well child, right? And then like this one is starting to freak me out. One <laughs> one day, the headmaster comes to Bruce and is just like, you know, hey, you're you're a sneaky little Wayne, you are, and and like you have to be punished. And he takes him to his office, and he like has him like bend over the desk, and like because he came from like a European like schooling, he uses like a birch switch mm. to like strike bruce okay he's like and like i think he did it on purpose that i would see and there's like a waistband and in the waistband is robert's head what it's like the top of his head yeah and he's like and and like as he's being beaten he's looking at the top of his head and he's like it was almost as bad as what i couldn't see because that was worse and like you look and you see that there's clearly this noir lighting and mr winchester has no shadow Mm. now this is a memory yeah, like this is a memory. This is not a dream. He's telling Alfred. He's like, you know, it's funny when the mobsters, because the mobsters mentioned that he's a man who has no shadow. You know, he's like starting to put a couple of things together. You almost Sherlock us. We get to the end of the book. We're yeah, like, oh, like, oh, oh, the connection. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he has no yeah, shadow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tells um, Alfred to prepare his uniform. Okay. He's like, I got, I got, I got some stuff I got to go take care of. Octavio is in his like penthouse apartment, penthouse or regular. It doesn't matter. He's just in his big ridiculous apartment, and he's received a note, and like. You know, hey, if there are palms and fronds around, it's called a villa. Uh, Doesn't matter where it is. Oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm in my villa. Yeah, and his his note is about like music and like all of that random such things, right? Okay. And then like, he's got like one guard with him, and like you know, he's like, dude, like you're gonna like wear a hole in the floor, like relax. Mm-hmm. He's like, have a drink, and he's just like, I'm not gonna, I don't want to drink that. Oh my god, he's like, no, Morgan Stern brought it over. It's fine, drink it. And then, like, they see a uh, whisper outside. Oh. And, like, Octavio just grabs a gun and just starts firing through the window. Like, he's he's out of his mind at this point. I mean, to be fair, he's scared. Yep. And he has every right to be. Absolutely. Because, like, this guy has gone through four mobsters now. Yep. And, like, he talked to him on the phone. Yeah. And, like, whispers, like, you ruined my coat. Like, you can literally see the bullet holes through his body. Oh. No. And he's just like... He's like, is that, is that how you treat an old friend, Octavio? Is that, is that really what you're going to do? You're not real. You're not here. Ah! <laughs> right? And he's just like, you know, he asks him. He goes, Octavio is a fascinating name. And it's, it's the eighth sign of eternity. And he talks about, like, musical notes and other such things. Yeah. And he holds up Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni has a character who, whose name is Octavio. Right. So there's a connection there. You go. there. Um, and then Batman shows up. That's Sweet. why that's why Batman like because Batman had that memory of the man with no shadow. Yes. He was like, I should go help them. Right. I think also he's just like And also I should probably just I'm, I'm gonna be showing up anyway, so I might as well. I'm Batman. Uh, so Whisper makes a run for it. Mm. Oh like, shit, it's Batman. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. So he he runs and like he's like, Octavia, don't go anywhere. And he's like, Okay, cool. I'm alive. <laughs> this is fine. Hey, like, uh Tully. That's his like man's name. He's just like, hey, and like Tully's not moving. Like, Tully's, like, frozen. Yeah. He's like, oh, and he looks at the wine. It's been poisoned. Yeah. 
So Batman's having like a like curse a, you, Morgan Stern. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Batman's having a sweet chase through a, a series of statues that occurs in Gotham. Yep. And um, he gets into like a, like a kind of fisty cuffs with Whisper, and then Whisper just starts yelling, "You and me, you and me." Hmm. And then Batman actually falls off the rooftop. Oh. And like is plummeting to his death, and his cape catches around the spear of like a cherub that's hanging off the side of a building and it's like choking him. Like his cloak <laughs> is choking him as he's oh, hanging there. Oh my God. He uses his grappling hook and he gets himself out of that. He swings back up to try to continue the, the fight essentially. Is like, ta-da, I'm here. Whisper's like, oh. okay. <laughs> and like he, Batman goes, Winchester. And Winchester goes, or Whisper goes, I know you. Oh. I know you. And then backs off the side of the building. Batman's like, oh, come back. And he falls, he hits the street. He says, ow. Batman's like, oh, crap, I got to get down there. Goes to Octavio to find out the fastest way down there and finds that he's dead. Yeah. And he's just like, Batman's like, okay. He goes, he's just like, damn. <laughs> damn. Okay. Damn, he's dead. I am not too upset about this, but also not a great track record. No. All right. Well, what's Batman going to do now? Mm -hmm. He's going to take a nap, and then he's just like, I need you to like wake me up at, at like 2 o'clock because like, I'm going to go back to my old school. Okay. So he goes back to the old school. He chats with the current head of school, and he's just like, yeah, I'd love to get like some like poetry readings that Mr. Winchester had. I know he <laughs> recorded them, and I'd love to have them. And they're like, yeah, we kind of don't want to associate with that guy. Like right. he's not like there was there was too much scandal. There was almost a scandal. Oh. Almost a scandal. Which almost. means it was a lot of messed up stuff. Yeah. And like we don't really want to open up that wound. And like Wayne just goes, I mean, of course I'd make a very sizable donation to the school's fund. And he's just like, Oh, hang on, let me let me go get those for you right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I'm not making a donation. Which I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love like Bruce Wayne like giving a little flex. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, like and he's like, I'm Batman, but like Chris Wayne comes in handy sometimes. A big time. Like, mm, yeah. So he brings the recordings back and he's listening to like a lot of this like older, like romantic style poetry. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, Batman's like, who is he? Like, well, I don't understand. Like, what's the, like, he's just musing about it. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like he like either absentmindedly switched out the reels or something else is happening. But like he hears his dad talking about like going to Vienna and Salzburg and Lake Des and like. You know, there's a famous drawn, uh, drowned monastery out there. I'm like, what do you think, Bruce? And like, Batman's like, <laughs> he's like trying to turn it off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be sad. Oh, no, no. It's all on the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Mr. Wayne, were you were listening to Father again. No. You know how you get. <laughs> I'm fine. Get in the clock room. <laughs> um, and it just keeps going. Like, he doesn't get a chance to stop it. Bruce is like, oh, it's just cute, this cute moment between the two of them. Kind of, where, like, Bruce is like, you know, oh, can I hear it? Can I hear the recording back? Like, it's still recording. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's not a toy. You still want to respect machinery like that. Like, <laughs> hang on. Like, relax. Okay, sorry, Damn sorry. it, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I, I forgot about that. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, man, my childhood was messed up. <laughs> Batman makes the leap in logic that he should go to Austria. Okay. Because this the opera? Kinda, no, because his dad mentioned it in the recording. And since his dad's been leaving him messages... Right in, in his, his dreams. dreams. Unlock the rose, okay. Yeah, like just, he's like, you know what? Maybe this is a thing. Yeah. I'm rich. I can go to Austria Power and Power up back. the helicopter. Here we go. It's not a big deal for me. Yeah, it's not like I'm taking a commercial flight. I'm taking the Batcopter. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we're, we're getting the backstory that's like Morgan Stern did in fact poison Octavio, and now yep. he's getting rid of some loose ends and, and like whatever. So who is this Morgan Stern? He's Morgan Stern? He's a mobster. Yeah. No, he's not, it's not Morgan. I know, Stern. I know. Yeah. But like, who is he? He's just a mobster. He was one of the guys who killed Mr. Whisper. And, like, basically he's like, this is really working in my favor. And so, like, I just took the opportunity to kill Octavio because uh, it's like, now I'm in charge. I'm the only guy left. Right. So, like, now I'm going to take over the city. And, like, he's like, oh, man. Like, it's only, it's too bad that, like, Batman it couldn't go away for a little bit. And then he sees the Batcopter leaving. He's <laughs> like, hot. Oh. This is, this oh, is man. This is the time for Octavio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Morgan, Morgan Stern. Stern. Everything's coming up Morgan Stern. <laughs> There are a lot of upside down people in this book. Yeah, a lot of uh, upside down visuals. Yeah. Batman, the He's Burning Man. Yeah. This guy this getting guy. his one leg lengthened. Mm. Oh yeah, he he's dropped to death. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure he's like, you know, Winchester, Whisper, Wicker. Yep. We we establish that the girl, the nun, meets Whisper. He gives her a rose. She doesn't take it, mm. and then he's like, "All right, I'm just gonna come back to that later." We see Batman in Austria, and he's trying desperately to speak German to them. And like, he's like, "Okay, my German's not great." 
He's just dressed as Batman. <laughs> He's like, hello, I'm Batman. Guten Tag. Yeah. And like the like monk, one of the monks is like, oh, you'll have to speak to the abbot. And like, it's just funny because like Batman's like, wait, hang on, slow down. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. And then, like, ich bin ein Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Batman runs into the, the head abbot friar guy. Sure. And like, that guy speaks English. So Batman's oh, like, God. oh, thank God. Okay, he's like, well, what can I do to help you? And he's just like, I just really need um, some directions to Lake Des. I want to go visit the monastery there. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. Let me, let me tell you a story about that before you go. <laughs> let me give you some context for the drowned monastery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, about 300 years ago, during the plague. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. You, you continue. You continue. 300 years ago, the plague's, like, ravaging Europe. And there, the, there's this monastery in like by Lake Des. Yep. Um, that is completely safe like they haven't let anybody in who has the plague and so they're all good in there right mm. <laughs> and like no we're fine we're fine no don't tell we'll me oh you're supposed to help us we help those who help themselves <laughs> these monks are safe in there one of them's name was brother manfred okay and brother manfred was like a shining example of like everything that they believed in and like he had a little friend and his little friend was like this younger guy who like inevitably would confess that he's like into some like messed up stuff crazy stuff okay right He's like a blasphemous altar with like a cross upside down. Upside down cross. Right. And that like he'd been corrupted by these ways. But at the same time, like he felt that sin was the road to salvation. So you had to commit as much sin as possible if you wanted to be saved. <laughs> That's convenient. Well, you can't be saved unless you've sinned. Yeah. Because like. Every... Uh, you know, there's original sin that we all believe in where you just born with it. No, 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 no need no. to do all that other stuff. Did no, 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 no. No, no, we do. Trust me. It's more fun that way. He's just like <laughs> indulging in every vice. We can come uh, become more humble in the sight of a merciful God. Okay. And so like we need to we need to mess up and like Man Manfred yeah, Manfred's like all about this. Yeah. He's like okay and like basically like convinces the entire order we got to do this and so they do like they completely like just become the like a debaucherous yeah. like group cult. One day a bunch of nuns show up at the door and the nuns are like we're not plague ridden can we please come in and they're like yeah you can come in yeah okay, we're having a rager. <laughs> Yeah, and they do all of the worst things they could possibly do to these women, right? right? And there's, like, a very young one, and she is, like, all... Uh, the most worst things are done to, to her. her. Like, mm -hmm. you thought it was bad before, it's worse for her, and then they burn her alive at the stake. Whoa. And then Manfred notices under his arm that he has he, he has the beginnings of the plague. Uh, he's picked it up someplace. Mm -hmm. And he's like... Those nuns lied to me! <laughs> uh -huh! <laughs> He's like, no, wait, I, this isn't right. I don't want to die. And so he makes a deal with the devil. Okay. And he says, you know, save me from the plague and let me live 300 years. Mm -hmm. And you may have my soul. Okay. And like, that that's totally what happens. And like, he recovers from the plague. and like, Oh man, why didn't I say more than 300? <laughs> right? Did everyone else get the plague though? No, everyone, every, he recovers and so nobody else gets it. Oh. And like, he like, they continue with their debaucherous like, Activities. They just keep it up, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, a flood comes. A lot of the monks are killed. He doesn't. He takes a lot of their bodies, and they, like, he takes them on, a, like, a crazy voyage. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, like, becomes, like, this, like, almost, like, ghost ship, and they go <laughs> on this, like, crazy tour yeah. around the world or what have you. With my dead friends. With Woo. my dead, dead friends. You understand? Mr. Botcher's lifestyle has to continue. Woo! Yeah, this party's not stopping. Yeah, that's right. Get on the boat. Oh, this is a party boat. And, like, essentially, like, the monk's just like, just so you know, that's what happened. <laughs> so that's what happened, okay? That's what happened. And, like, he's like, but you can go find it, like, over It's underwater here. over there. Yeah, he's just go to where you see the, the, the river and follow it and you'll find the lake. I'm sorry, were you talking? I, I spaced out there. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't care anymore. What? 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 I don't speak German. You said something about chocolate? So basically, but he also says, like, he's just like, oh, Batman, one more thing. Like, stories like this don't, like, haven't always come to an end yet. Right. And, like, Batman's like, uh-huh. Fair enough. So Batman goes to the cathedral. Like, you see, like, a good portion of it is still above water, but there's a part of it that's below water. Batman ah. wants to go below, so he puts in his breather. Yep. And, like, he swims on down. And <laughs> I think the breather is possibly my favorite Batman gadget. It's so mm. awesome. I'm like, it should be real. Why isn't it real? <laughs> yeah. Who could, like, like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so Batman goes through. I love the scene of him walking up the cathedral stairs to Underwater. get out with, like, fish there. That's cool. So he comes out into the cathedral, and, like, he has this moment where, like, he thinks he sees something, like a light, and he, like, sees this spectral form. Mm. And he's like... Bizarre. Uh, hello? And he calls out to them. And then I love this image of, No, like, just like it. Yeah. I love this, like, terrified Batman. Yeah. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> ah, what? 
He sees a goddamn ghost? Yeah, he sees a goddamn ghost. That's awesome. Yes, he sees a ghost. He's like a, like a skeleton dressed like a nun, essentially, cool. holding a lantern. That's and what that is. I thought that was dead man for a second. <laughs> no, it's like, that's like like a nun's habit, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, he like is yeah, blinded. Yeah, flying nun, that thing is freaking huge. <laughs> nice timely reference. Yeah, it's the only nun I know. <laughs> so um, Batman's blinded, and then when he looks again, he's like, oh, it, ha, it's a mirror. Ha, ha. Batman should leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, like, follows, like, a series of, I guess, co like, corridors and, like, finds, I guess, like, this rose doorknob or, like, oh. no, he finds, like, a, a like in the wall, there's, like, a rose carving. He's, like, unlock the rose. Got it. And he kind of clicks on Force it. Force detective. Here we go. Here we go. And he opens it up and, like, it's a blueprint, basically, for a cathedral. And he's, like, they're building one in Gotham. Cool. Oh. Thanks, Dad. Oh. So they're ah. rebuilding this cathedral it's, in Gotham. There is a new cathedral being built. Yeah, yeah. But, like... They took the plans of this cathedral, or no, some, those oh, no, like the like the messed up monks. Yeah, this cathedral. is like a new cathedral. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wonder over what's what in he discovered. Also, time no, no, that's actually a cover. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was just the last page. Nope. Oh, nope. That, that was a cover. That hasn't happened yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought, damn it! I covers. thought he was like, oh, here are the plans. Oh God. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. No, that would be baller. Yeah. No. Oh, no, well. no, no. Well, I mean, basically, it's because it's in the cover. Yeah. So. So, so they're gonna build that. So they're gonna build that crazy. Yeah, cathedral. we have like an establishing scene because it's like Batman has to come back to Gotham. There's like a shootout between the police and like a guy who's a hostage, and then like they, the, the hostage is freed, and Batman takes care of it, and the cops are like, "Oh, I guess Batman's back." Because like literally, there's like <laughs> the cr the 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 criminal. Yeah, the criminal is like laying on the ground, and like there's like a Batman like posted on him. Basically, right. it's just uh, kicked like, his ass. You're welcome. Oh, they're like, oh thank God, it's really hard being a cop. <laughs> What about Batman? Like, yeah. we were very much used to not having to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. So Batman goes to visit uh, Morgan Stern. And essentially, like, he's like, hey, you seem a little jumpy. What's up with that? And he's like, oh, Mr. Wh uh, Whisper didn't kill Octavio. I know you did. Like, basically, Batman just puts it all on front street. Uh -huh. He's like, you killed him, and I know that. And, like, Morgan Stern's like, "How? Do, what, what are you talking about? What? what? He was there. And he's just like, yeah, but his poem was about music, and you killed him through poison. And I'm like, hey, look at that, right? Yeah. So then they explain, Detective. They explain the whole, like, how it all went down back in the day, and that, like, you know, like, literally, like... They were sick of being Well, no, no, no. Like, with, oh, when with, they killed When the they dude, killed, Mr. like, Whisper. Mr. Whisper and that, like, you know, like, we'd all kind of kept things, like, you know, solid between everybody, but now that they're gone, I figure I'll just take over and, like, oh, isn't, isn't like that great? The, the, the mutual murder of Mr. Whisper kind of, like, kept in, kept a kind of, like, blood tie. Yeah, they all, the like, they them. all had their, like, like sections, right? Yeah. Like, they're all in on it. But now that he's back, all bets But now off. we're also tying right. in, like, yeah, he was, he was a child serial killer, but at the same time, like, He's been killing people for a long time. Yeah. Ah. Especially yeah. kids, apparently. Well, yeah, yeah. Like he's had a, he has a thing for that. Yeah. Probably because it's so debaucherous. Right. Like, it's right, such right. a sin. Yeah. Um. So, anyway, Morgan Stern gets his, like, poem, and then Batman leaves. <laughs> and Batman's like, nah. Nah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a poem. Ha, 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 ha. I'm out. <laughs> See, if I were Batman, I'd write a poem and then leave it. <laughs> be like, oh, looks like you got a poem. I gave him a heart attack, Alfred. Batman has the the Blue cathedral Prince. and like he or the the blueprints for that, and he pulls out the blueprints for the new one. He lays it. He's like, it's almost a perfect match. Yep. And then he mentions like Batman's like, I wish I knew more about sacred geometry. Mm. Sacred geometry is like geometric shapes and like other such symbols that it, like have magical or like otherworldly power based on a god that they might uh, like be ascribed to okay. right so he's like i wish i knew more about this anyway um <laughs> but like look alfred it's three boobs <laughs> that, oh, it's hot. sacred geometry <laughs> that's what it is um he's talking about the arch though specifically like he mentioned he notices the arch and like he starts talking about the word gothic and like what it's derived from, how it's from the word like gothic, which means like, you know, magical, right? Like having sure. a magical or like spiritual quality, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Alfred, by the way, the whole time is talking about how Bruce did not bring him a gift from Austria. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, 825 is Alfred's birthday. That's why he set the clocks like that. Yeah. So as a guy with no shadow who lives 300 years, mm -hmm. I've got crazy dreams. There's ghosts, murdered children, and occult architecture. How does this all connect? And like I, Alfred's response is, one shudders to think. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Alfred. How droll. Right? So then like 
Batman starts drawing this arch, and like he's like this, like has this ogive or ogiv quality, which like basically would funnel things like energy up into it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I wonder if it's like supposed to be something aimed towards like God, right? Right? And like, so he's like, okay. So Alfred then questions. He's like, out of curiosity, like, oh no, because Batman's like, I've been dreaming about my dad this whole time. Like, what is going to happen at the cathedral on May Day? Right. He's like, what? What is going to happen there? And like, he's like, let me, let me, let me finish telling you what happened with Mister Winchester. <clears throat> let me finish telling you what happened with Mister Winchester after I saw the head in the garbage can. Right. Right. And he's like, that night, like I like like ran off and called my dad. Mm. And like he came the next day. Aww. And, like, he's, like, I remember him, like, arriving, like, a knight in shining armor, and he went into Winchester's office, and, like, he argued with him, and, like, he's, like, I don't know what was said, but when he came out, he looked pale. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's, like, it didn't matter, though, because, like, literally he put me in the car and he took me home that night, and, like, I was going to stay at home. And then we see, it's, like, I'll never forget that first night home, and then, like, his dad's, like, I had a great idea. We should celebrate, like, that Bruce is home and we're a family again. Let's go see a movie. Ah. Uh. And he's like, and that's why nothing ever happened to Mr. Winchester because my dad never got to pursue it and he was going to. Right. And I'm like, that's messed up. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Mr. Mr. Whisper, Winchester, Wicker, whatever you want to do, right. is like down in the cathedral, that caretaker, Mr. Trimble, comes downstairs and like, Winchester's opened up the time capsule and oh. like Trimble's like, uh, Lame. you probably shouldn't do that. The mayor has to open that. He's just it's like, my stuff in there. That's exactly it. He's like, no, no, no. You don't understand. The so-called time capsule, this is my things. And like, he pulls out a cord. He's like, check this out. He's like, this is, this is pretty cool, right? What do, you, what do you think of that? Right? And he's like, we want to take a closer look. And he gets behind him and he just chokes him to death with it. <laughs> How did I let this happen? Right? Is that close enough for you? Yeah. You, do you see it? Cool. So do you see? <laughs> do, do you see? So then Batman is meant to meet Morgan Stern okay. in like one of ba like one of Gotham's many factories Naturally. with like a big ridiculous like just nothing but like you know walkways super high up and yep. like gears. Yeah, they and only like, make action sequences. Like, what do you make here? <laughs> explosions. <sighs> okay. Very well. <laughs> All right. Moving on then. Batman goes to find Morgan Stern. He's like he's like it's it's Batman. <laughs> hey. Hello. He like rounds a corner and there's just literally a room full of hanging bodies. And cool. it's just this dope ass image. Yeah, Batman being like, <gasps> Batman's like, He's oh, not quite he's... as terrified as he was when he saw the ghost. No, but... the ghost really shook him because he's like, bodies are bodies. You're gonna die. I've day. seen those. Yeah. yeah. This is a ghost. Because the idea is that the nun who was burned alive could never rest uh... until this man died. Right. Oh. That's and cool. So like she wanders. So she's the young nun who Did shows up at this cathedral. Did we see the ghost image? Earlier in the book? There was a cover. Okay. They mix the covers in, but like the it artist- just spoils the book well, instead. Well, not only that, but it's all Jansen's art, so it flows flawlessly. Yeah, between page and cover? Yeah, yeah. so it's like, like, wait. Did that happen, or is that just a cover? Yeah. We saw like, the ghost, and I was like, oh, it's the ghost again. Yeah. Whoa, ghost. The, he sees Morgan Stern is there, dead as well, along with all of Morgan Stern's guys. Right. And then, like, Mr. Whisper's behind him, and he's just like, you know, he says something about like, oh, you know what they say about small men, and then like Batman throws a batarang at him, which he catches. Oh shit! And then Mr. Whisper takes like this big pulley that he had, throws it at Batman, mm -hmm. and as he's doing, he's like, that hurt. Oh, I'm not cool with that. Uh oh. It hits Batman. I love the sequence because there is a horror to this sequence oh. where Batman gets hit by the pulley. He's gonna be knocked off the catwalk he's on, and so he grabs onto one of the dead bodies to try to like save himself, the body falls with him and like they basically fall together until Batman hits the catwalk beneath him and the other body just falls. But I was like, Ugh. the idea of him like grasping yeah, onto grasping the dead. Yeah, grasping at anything and it's a dead guy. Yeah, I'm like. Hey, at least he didn't rip his arms off. <laughs> right. Batman's knocked off unconscious. He wakes up in a Rube Goldberg style death machine. <laughs> We're like, he's strapped to like- This dude strangled someone to death with some old rope. Yeah. And he's gonna strang him up on this- Yeah, and it's like on one of those like, you know like those old like roller conveyor belt yes. things? Yeah. Like he's yes, on that much. and like, the idea is like, literally he's gonna light like, do you see all this? There's like all these candles and like things that are going to move and it all set into motion. When you said Rube Goldberg death machine, I thought you were just making a joke. No, you meant yeah. that. Yeah, no, I know I meant it, that. I meant that. <laughs> Um, and the idea is that inevitably there is a big 
barrel, like a steel barrel that'll fall on Batman's head, crushing his head. Jesus Christ, just give me a gun, I'll kill myself. <laughs> no, not a gun! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Rick. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Mr. Whisper reveals that he's like, I know who you are. I, I, you know, I can't, I'm, I can't believe we're meeting like this again, Wayne. Like, you were such a timid boy, and you were going to be my next victim. Right. But your father, of course, pulled Screw you away. Things up. But it didn't matter anyway, because, you know, what ended up happening to him, how tragic. Uh-huh. He's just a dick. By the way, he's, like, smoking a cigarette. He's, like, he's, he's like not flicking like, the ashes on Batman. I like that. That's a cool, like, character trait. Yeah. He's, he's not laying responsibility for the No, he's not like, right. I, he's not like I set that in motion. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like, literally, he's just like, you know, you know, he says, your father suspected. He knew that I killed those children. Um, but like it, he would have exposed me if you know fate hadn't intervened, mm -hmm. and so like I could keep doing what I was doing. Right. Like it's that's like, excellent proof for this guy that he's right. Right. Yeah. He's like just, someone found out, and then they were murdered yeah. by somebody else. So I should just keep on killing kids. Yeah. Got it. What a dick. Right. So he's like, so here's the thing. Like I, he shows him the contraption. He's like, I'm gonna light this candle, <laughs> and then that's gonna fucking do this. Blah 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 blah. Why? And he's it's like, not it's part of his modus operandi. It's just, well, no. Not only that, but if we, anyone that has ever played Mousetrap, you set it up, it never goes off right. Yeah. Right. Well, he's like, hang on. Um, let, let me let me just monologue at you because clearly I'm Please going to do. win. Thank so you. here we go. He's like, here, see, do you see this this cord? Do you see this cord I have? Do you see? You want to see it really close again? Uh, no. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. No. I this is that. this is the type of like lore that I love. Mm. So like, I like it. You can think it's stupid. I don't care. Uh, I don't give a crap. But like he takes the cord out and he's like, "Do you see this? Here, it's my very soul." Because he, he made a deal with the devil and then he measured his shadow with the cord, with this magic cord that trapped his soul within it. Okay. I'm like, that's that's like old world shit right yes. there. I love that. I'm like, that's so cool. Like the devil's like, ah, all you have to do is measure your your shadow with this cord, yep. which is why he has no shadow. Yeah. It's as though the sh your shadow is your soul. Yeah. And, yeah. like, and so, no like, soul. he's the man with their shadow. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's, that's cool. so neat. Okay, cool. He's like, but that's why I can't die. And he's like, and maybe you're wondering why I'm telling you all this and right. why I'm going to kill you like that. And he's like, well, he's like, because actually I'm sparing you from what's to come. You actually have a cleaner death than those in Gotham are going to have. Mm. And then he went into, like, across the Atlantic to Gotham Town. <laughs> where, like, he set up shop there and he took their bodies, which were infected with the plague. Right. And he started, like, experimenting with them to create a super virulent plague. It's, it's super potent and, like, it's, it's pestle and all that stuff. And okay. then he wanted to construct this cathedral, which I guess has taken from then on to yes. construct with various things that were going on, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea is that when the cathedral, um, when the bells chime out on May Day, when it opens, like, when the doors fling open for it, They'll ring so loudly, they'll shatter the glass in the cathedral, and the vial will be also made of glass, which will shatter as well, which will loose it into the city, and it'll kill everybody. And as they die, their souls will be sucked up through the cathedral, and he'll funnel them to the devil, so that the devil will let him live. Because May Day marks... Is coming. Is, it's May Day is his 300th year. Okay, all right. And so he's like, and so I'll trade him all these souls for myself. Now, did he get confirmation that's actually going to be working no. out? No, <laughs> he's just kind of like, he's operating under some I assumption. I 300 years to plan. Yeah, Not only that, but like the past 200 years, I kind of fucked around a little bit, and then I was like, "Oh shit, I gotta <laughs> oh, get this church built." Man, right? it's coming. Yeah, 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 and so like he's like, you know, it's uh, you'll be dead before the uh, an hour before the cathedral bell strikes midnight, because that's I guess that's when he's that's when it'll finally ring out for the first time. Sure. And like at, he says, it'll usher in. I'm gonna totally screw this up. Walpurgis knocked. Okay, I don't know what that means. Walpurgis knocked is like the night of of witches. It's uh, like a like a like a holiday kind of thing. Yes. Where it's like they you'd go to the top of a mountain and like have a huge celebration. Right. And so like you know, swirling souls and all that stuff. Like the whole the whole thing, the sure. whole visual. That's what he's going for here. Mm -hmm. And so like he he ends up like leaving Batman to like to his doom. Yes. As as you do. As you do. As they all do. As, as you do. And so the machine does its thing, and, like, it, you know, Batman, like, of course, is like, oh, God, I'm going to die. Oh, nope, I'm good. And he gets out. Like, we he don't see it. it out. He figures it you don't, you don't see it, because this is Grant Morrison's Batman. Yeah, he just gets like, out. Well, how did he get out? He needed to get out. Yep. He just he just got out. Yep. Yes, yeah, so, mousetrap. I told you. He's like, nice try. It never goes. Yeah. <laughs> the guy never flips in the tub. That's and right. if he flips in the tub, the thing doesn't fall. And if the thing falls, it doesn't go in the person. Yeah. So... 
you know. But it does work. The machine completely works. Batman just gets out. Right. So, um, you know, up in the cathedral, you know, Whisper is all like, here we go. This is going to be awesome. The pa- the rose panel is going to break. Mm-hmm. Is a rose thing is there. Yep. Now, does the nun know it's him? So the nun is like freaking out. Like the nun is just like like singing the Ring Around the Rosies song. Okay, all right. Yeah. And, like at, like losing. She, oh, maybe she's is like she psychically. Is she the nun? So yeah, yeah. She was reincarnated. Remember, like, she can't die. So she, no, she, her soul couldn't rest. Right, right, right. So basically, like um, he finds a piece of paper like in his pocket <laughs> that says, "My hour has come when the sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself." Okay. And like he's like, Batman must put it there. And <laughs> yeah. there's like a big explosion. He's like, oh, Batman. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit, it's Batman. And I love this image. He's just like, Mr. Whisper. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even freaking wringing his hands. Just, hey. I'm going to get so mad at you. <laughs> he basically has to make his grand escape. He, he's gonna, he, he leaves the nun behind. Batman's like, stay where you are. Like, She's like, like, no. Yeah, like she wasn't gonna do that anyway. Mm-hmm. But like, that's like the second time Batman's done this. Stay here. You got it. Oh, oh, me don't move. Oh. I thought everybody else I thought, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, no. Oh, I can see how you would... Damn it! <laughs> so then, like, um, Whisper's, like, running through the cathedral, and he's just like, you would chase me here? I built this place, Batman. Like, I know this place inside and out. So he goes to a box where he has, like, his vial. Uh-oh. And, like, he's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. And Batman has the, his breather in his mouth. <laughs> he's like, go ahead. So, like... Batman and he have a fight. The vial gets dropped, but they fall through the floor, and you see like bones, like, like embedded explode in there? out of the walls and oh foundation. My God. Those are like the bones of his his brothers. His I guess. brothers, children, sure. anyone. He built everyone. There's into just the lots of bones. Of oh God. And so, like, he and Batman have like a like a, like, a, like a scuffle for a moment, and they realize that they've landed on like the subway tracks. Cool. Right, and like. Mr. Whisper seemingly gets hit by a subway. Yeah. And then naturally just gets back up. Right. And, like, they continue having their fight. It hurt, though. <laughs> it, it must have. It must have hurt, right? Yeah. And then, like, Batman, like, sprays him, like, with mace, essentially, which, like, <laughs> blinds him. And, like, Mr. Whisper's had enough. He's like, he's like, you bastard, I'm, I'm coming for you. Yeah. He grabs him, and he's just like, no, come on. Like, we'll take, we'll, we'll meet this train together. Because, like, I'm fine. That's cool. I won't die. Yeah, like, bring it. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's, he's just holding, holding Batman. Batman. So then Batman, like, flings him forward into the subway. <laughs> like, into where the subway driver like, is. Yeah. Batman drops to the ground to oh. let the subway go over him. Don't do that. That's dangerous. Yeah. It is, low, it is lower Batman parts. Batman can do that. Because mm-hmm. Batman knows... He's fake. Well, also because Batman knows every, like, every subway train, car every, in every Gotham. Rail. Yep. If he was anywhere else, he'd be in trouble. That's right. And then Batman's like, oh, shit, the bell. Because... The bell will still ring. The vial's still there. Yes. So he like races up and he ends up being able to like pull the bell knocker out. Oh. And so midnight comes and like there, like he's oh, fine. Cool. And like he calls for Alfred and he's like, Alfred, come get me. And like bring a band-aid. <laughs> and so he wins. And Mr. Whisper leaves the subway and goes back home. And like oh. he goes up to his apartment. And like there's just a voice that says like, come in, Manfred. I've been waiting for you. And it's just like, oh, what the hell are you doing here? And it's the nun, and the nun's there. And it's just like, you know, like, oh, like, oh, I, I thought you knew who I was. We made a bargain 300 years ago. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, you, damn. And you tried to cheat me, so you lose your last day. <gasps> Come on. It's, it's time to pay the piper. That's awesome. And, like, it, basically his last line is, come with me and die forever. <laughs> And he's like, no! Off he goes. Dope. I was hoping she would strangle him with his own cord. Right? No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Hang on. So basically, like, the next day the news is like, we don't know what happened to the cathedral. Big church. Who cares? We don't need that. Let's build another toy factory. Yeah. (laughs) Or like a carnival. (laughs) Or, uh, I don't know, maybe an iceberg-like palace. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right? Some sort of, like, duality-themed thing. Yeah. Ooh, an arboreum. Right? How about a cosmetics factory? <laughs> These are all great ideas. I think we have time for all of them. <laughs> so, the next day, um, uh, Bruce is in a greenhouse watching TV, because if you're that rich, you have a, you have TV, a TV in everywhere. every room. In every room. And, like, Alfred's like, a package came for you, sir. I, I did the regular checks, but, like, here it is. And he looks at it, and he's like, I know this cord. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. And so he like opens the package. No! Out, and he opens the box, and inside the box is his heart. Whoa. 
and like, not Bruce's heart, Man- Manfred's heart. Okay. Man- what the hell's his Whis- name? Whispers. Yeah, Whispers heart. It is Manfred, Manfred, Whisper, Whisk, Wicker, and Winchester all the same guy. Right. Yeah. And like he's like, he's like whoa. <laughs> he's like, shall I alert the Tin Man, sir? <laughs> and Bruce's like, I have a better idea. I need you to charter a plane to Austria. Oh. And so he goes back to Why the. Why not just take the back copter again? I don't know. Um. So he, he, he I'm goes, not flying with this thing in my black goes, He goes. It's going to start beating. I'm going to freak out right? now. He goes back to the cathedral. And he takes the heart. He remembers the story of the young nun. Manfred's pyre would like haunt forever. And that's why like the, the ghost seemingly was so illuminated because like she died like by being burned to death. And that like only when like the, he was gone and like left this earth that she could rest. And so he takes the heart and he chucks it into, into the, the lake. And he's just like, she waited 200 years in torment for this. And so like, as he like throws it, he says like, you're free, go in peace. And like, he leaves and you see like in the cathedral, there's one lit window. Oh! That's, oh, that's cool. fucking baller. And like, it's like, and that's it. And that's Batman Gothic. That's a spooky story. It's a spooky story. It's a cool story. Now, Grant Morrison is known for his love of like, gothic literature yes. and like so that's why this is called gothic and why a lot of the themes are in here mm-hmm. um there are like homages to a lot of different things there's a movie called m which is like i think an eastern european movie it's a peter Lorre movie essentially it's a movie that is like a, an early noir film and it would it, it basically show everybody the playbook for making a noir film yes and that has a story of a man who's killing children yeah. and how like criminals like have to come together to stop them. That's cool. And so like he took that, right? Cool. Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni is about like a, a debaucherous man who makes a deal with demons. There's a poem called Manfred by Lord Byron. Oh. <laughs> um, that he like, that's where I seemingly got the name from. Check it out, give it a shot. There, there's a lot of like different horror elements there. Ghosts, undying people, bodies, skeletons. And then obviously the unspoken horror of like what can happen to a child? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just a lot of layers to this couched yeah. in this, like, five issue. And the Nightmare series are... The Nightmares sequences. are fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. love those Nightmares. That with the, I would love to see that animated. They're oh, never going to animate this. No. But, like, those school kids, like, just Batman in this room, and all of a sudden it's like, and yep. then they all turn. Oh, yeah. And they're just, oh. That'd be cool. It's Eager. perfect for what we're doing. It oh, is. Definitely. On, our, on our spooky trip through October. Oh, this is another one down, guys. All right. I don't know what's to come because I don't know where this is going to be. In, in the rotation. Yeah, I have no idea. No idea. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, check the description box down below to learn more about this book, about us, about our social medias, about our Patreons, about the whole thing. It's all down there. He's, he's, we highly recommend you check that out and check this out and check more of us out. Check Otherwise, out. Mr. Whisper's coming. <laughs> he better not be. I don't want that. Say, say Mr. Whisper five times. No! <laughs> I've already said it twice. Oh, God! Oh, great. Don't do it! No. Mr. Whisper! No! Mr. Whisper! <laughs> Mr. Whisper! <laughs> great. Thanks a lot, Ben. I said it. Chances are yeah, I'm the only one going to die. All right. But now we're associated. Yeah. And so are you. Again. Thanks for watching, yeah. everybody. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.